Miss Ruth here. How have you been? Oh, I'm glad you've been well. Well, school is almost out, isn't it? I know you'll be glad to get a break from all of that. Let me ask you a question. How many of you have been practicing showing your fruit of the Spirit? That's great. Well, today we're going to begin talking about a new children's message series, The Lord's Prayer. So over the next few months, that's what we're going to be talking about. The Lord's Prayer is the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples when they asked him to teach them how to pray. But before we learn about the Lord's Prayer, first we need to talk about what is prayer and why we need to pray. First, prayer is just communicating or talking directly with God our Father. Can you think of ways that we communicate with each other? Those are all great answers. You know, the most common way that we communicate today is through our cell phones. We communicate via text, email, Facebook, Twitter, and Snapchat. News services communicate with us through the newspaper and TV. Sometimes we communicate with each other through mail, letters, cards. People who are deaf often communicate through sign language. And sometimes we just communicate with gestures or just facial expressions. You know, long ago, people used altars and smoke and fire to help them communicate with God. Back then, a person might write a prayer on a piece of paper, set the piece of paper on fire, put it on an altar, and they thought that as the smoke rose, the one doing the praying, they felt that what they prayed for would be answered by the gods in heaven. But because Jesus and the Holy Spirit we have today, we don't need to do such things to pray. So while we might not be able to call God on our cell phones, send him an email, a Facebook, text, or tweet, or Snapchat, we can still talk directly to God just like you would talk with your friend or your parent. So why should we pray? Well, because prayer makes our relationship with God stronger and better. And praying also helps us stay out of trouble. Even though we can talk directly to God, there are some do's and some don'ts that we have to think about before we pray. Pretty much everything in life has things, ways to do things that are, work well and ways that don't work well. For example, think of riding a bicycle. It works well when you wear your helmet, you pedal, you keep your hands on the handlebars, and you look where you're going. It doesn't work well if you close your eyes, sit on it backwards, wave your arms in the air. So just like riding a bike has do's and don'ts, prayer has do's and don'ts also. In Matthew chapter 6, verses 5 through 8, just before Jesus taught his disciples the Lord's Prayer, he told them, when you pray, don't be like the hypocrites who love to pray publicly on street corners and in synagogues where everyone can see them. But when you pray, go away by yourself. Shut the door behind you and pray to your Father in heaven. Jesus told them, when you pray, don't babble on and on as people of other religions do. They think their prayers are answered merely by repeating themselves over and over and over again. So, if you've been listening, what are the two ways that Jesus tells us not to pray? Well, the first don't is, 
Don't be like the hypocrites. A hypocrite is a person who say they believe one thing, but they do something else. When you have a conversation with a friend, do you like to stand on the street corner or in the middle of the hallway at school and shout so that everyone can hear your conversation? Of course not. People who want to have their conversations overheard are usually just trying to show off. Jesus doesn't want us to do that. He wants our prayers to be special conversations with God and God alone. The second knot is don't babble. Babble is a word we usually use when we're talking about babies. When babies are learning to talk, they make a bunch of funny sounds and repeat the same sounds over and over and over again because it sounds like fun to them. Babbling is a good thing to do when you're a baby, but not when you're talking to God. God doesn't need us to repeat ourselves because he knows what we're going to ask before we even ask it. You know, there are also five things the Bible tells us to do. First, we are to pray righteously. That's with a right heart. Second, we are to pray without ceasing. That means all the time. Third, we are to pray confidently. That means we know what we're asking and we know God hears us. Fourth, we are to pray with thanksgiving. That means we're to thank God for all that he's done for us, all that he's given us, and all that he will give us. And fifth, we are to pray with a humble heart, remembering that we are all sinners and talking to a perfect God who loves us no matter what. So you see, prayer is very important to our lives as Christians, and it's one way that we can bring God into our life. What I want you to remember is that God is everywhere. So to talk to him, all you need to do is think the thoughts you want to share with him, and he will hear you. So now that we know what prayer is and how and why we pray, next time we'll be looking at the Lord's Prayer and what it means to pray that prayer. Let us pray. Thank you, God, our Father, for always hearing our prayers. Help us to never pray as hypocrites or babble like babies. Amen. Bye, guys. It's been fun. Till next time. Smooches.